go. Morning. Good morning. Good morning, Suda Circle. Good morning, CEOs. Good morning. Uh, God bless you all. Uh, happy, what's today? Thursday. Thursday. Happy Thursday. I, I feel like I get lost with my days. Um, happy Thursday. I hope all of you are feeling well, that you feel strong in your bodies, uh, that you are ready to jump into the word of God and in prayer. Today is day three. We made it. We made it to day three. Um, there. I don't know. I don't know why this fast felt a little hard. <laughs> I don't know why. You know, we've been fasting for a while. Um, and I don't know why this time it felt a little harder. Uh, but we did it. We did it. We did it. And uh, we are here for day three. This is the last stretch, right, Sharita? Um. <laughs> It just felt a little bit harder than usual, but um, I know that God is doing something miraculous in our midst, and uh, we can't miss it. We can't miss it. And so we are in our series of problem solvers. Come on. Uh, we recognize ourselves as problem solvers so that we show up uh, where the Lord needs us, uh, whenever he needs us, right? Even as the song we were just listening to, um, I can be anything, but I'd rather be an offering. An offering is something that I lay on the altar as a holy sacrifice, right? And it is something that that can pivot whenever, um, you know, we need to pivot that listens to the voice of God and moves with his voice, moves with his holy presence. And so uh, we we can do anything. There's, there's absolutely uh, so many things that we can take up and do, but we rather be an offering. And that's a strong, strong, powerful, powerful statement. Um, but the Lord honors it that even in the midst of everything that you experienced throughout your call, that you make a choice to be an offering. You make a choice to be the one that he desires to use. You make a choice to be the agent on the land to release uh, solutions as problems arise. You make a choice to stand while others are sitting. And so I commend all of you on here um, that as you continuously say yes to whatever God is calling you to, you are making a conscious decision to remain as an offering. God, whatever you wanna do, whatever you need to do in my life, whatever you need to do in my mind, in my heart, oh God, I'm an offering. You do exactly what needs to be done so that I can be the woman of God that you've called me to be in the earth realm. And so we bless God. We bless God. Good morning again. Um, we're going to open up in prayer and then we're going to jump in. So uh, our Heavenly Father, we just honor you in this moment. We honor you, oh God, uh, this morning with the fruit of our lips. Father, you are everything to us, oh God. You are uh, everything we need, Lord God. You are the one that causes all things to be possible. And so we honor who you are, oh God. We honor, Lord God, that you are sovereign that you are perfect in all of your ways, that you are excellent, Father. Lord, we honor that you are a good dad. We honor, oh God, that you are I am that I am. We honor you. And Lord, we pray, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that as we push forward, as we continue to build, as we are offerings before you, Lord, that every single thing that needs to be established in the earth realm that is going to come through our hands, Lord God, let it be done in excellence. Let it be done to glorify you. Let it be done to bring your name honor. Let it be done, oh God, to bring heaven to earth. Let it be done, oh God, to see transformation in lives of people, oh God. Let it be done so that the earth can move further and further away from evil and more into your goodness. Let it be done, oh God, so that darkness can be pushed back and light can be exposed. I declare that people, oh God, will not, oh God, experience sickness, but they will experience health, oh God, through our businesses. Father, that they will not experience chaos. They will experience order, Lord. Father, let us be your hands and feet, oh God, that are called and commissioned by heaven to do the work, oh God, to see the world transform. And so, Father, I thank you for calling us for such a time as this to see, oh God, your word established in the earth realm. Continue to do the work in us and through us, oh God, as we build. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 All right, so we're going to jump in. We're going to jump in. Um, well, I just felt something on me as I prayed. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. He's He is here and ready to dive in with us. All right, so we're here, day three, day three. And um, 
if I had to put a title on this, it would be the world is looking for me. The world is looking for me. The world is looking for you. The world is looking for kingdom CEOs. The world is looking for me. And we're going to read Daniel 5. We're going to read Daniel 5. And um, the Bible is so dope. And so as, as I always say, it's so yummy. The word of God is so yummy because there's some things that, like, you know, like, I've lived in Brooklyn all my life and there's certain places in Brooklyn I've never been. And I would drive past certain places and I'm like, I have never, ever seen this place before. Like when I've been here all my life, I don't understand. Um, and that's how I be feeling about the Bible. Every time I read the word of God, I'm like, but I didn't even know that this was in here. <laughs> I didn't even know that this part was here. I didn't know that. Like I probably heard like, you know, little smidges or something, but I ain't never know this was in here. So I love the Bible because it's always surprising me. It's always surprising me. It's like a new meal um, that I can dive into. And so I thank God for his word. But we're going to read um, Daniel 5, and I'm going to read it from the message translation. Um, if you do not have your Bibles, uh, just listen very closely. If you do, follow along. Um, for those of you who you know you just woke up and you're feeling a little bit sleepy, go ahead and go wash your face so that you can get a little jolt so that we can jump in together and not be distracted. All right. Um, so from verse one, King Belshazzar had a great feast for his 1000 nobles. The wine flowed freely. Belshazzar, heady with the wine, ordered that the gold and silver chalices his father Nebuchadnezzar had stolen from God's temple of Jerusalem be brought in so that he his nobles, his wives, and concubines can drink from them. So chalices were like these big glasses, big, well, not glasses, but they were made from metal. They were like these big um cups. And so uh, when the gold and silver chalices were brought in, the king, his noble, his wives, and his concubines drank wine from them. They drank the wine and drunkenly praise their gods made of gold and silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. And so they were having them a little wine party, right? Um, and they were praising their idols as they drank. Um, and so verse five says, at this very moment, the fingers of a human hand appeared and began writing on the lamp illumined whitewashed wall of the palace. When the king saw the disembodied hand riding away, he went white as a ghost, scared out of his wits. His legs went limp and his knees knocked. He yelled out for the enchanters, the fortune tellers, and the diviners to come. He told these Babylonian magi or magi, anyone who can read this writing on the wall and tell me what it means will be rich and famous and rich purple rolled the great gold chain and be third in command in the kingdom. So here uh, Kill Bel King Belshazzar is experiencing something where a hand just appears and starts writing on the walls of his palace. Now, I don't know about you, but if a hand appears and starts writing on the wall, they could have the house. I might even leave the car because I'm going to run on foot. <laughs> okay. But um, they he saw this hand and it said he turned white, right? Um, because he was very afraid, very afraid. His leg, his legs went um, limp and he called out for the enchanters, the fortune tellers and the diviners to come. So we know this is everybody that works in some level of witchcraft. He called them and he said, I need you to tell me what this means. And if you do, I got some stuff for you, right? And so verse eight says one, after the other they tried but could make no sense of it they could neither read what was written nor interpret it to the king so now the king was really frightened and all the blood drained from his face the nobles were in a panic nobody could figure this thing out verse 10 the queen heard of the hysteria among the king and his nobles and came to the banquet hall she said long live the king do not be upset don't sit around looking like ghosts there is a man in your kingdom who is full of the divine Holy Spirit. What I heard was there is a sister 
There is a suda sister. There is there is a kingdom CEO in your land who is full of the divine Holy Spirit. During your father's time, he was well known for his intellectual brilliance and spiritual wisdom. He was so good that your father, King Nebuchadnezzar, made him the head of all the magicians, enchanters, fortune tellers, and diviners. There was no one quite like him. He could do anything, interpret dreams, solve mysteries, explain puzzles. His name is Daniel, but he was renamed Belteshazzar by the king. Have Daniel called in. He'll tell you what is going on here. So Daniel was called in. The king asked him, are you the Daniel who was one of the Jewish exiles my father brought here from Judah? I've heard about you, that you're full of the Holy Spirit, that you've got a brilliant mind, that you are incredibly wise. The wise men and enchanters were brought in here to read this writing on the wall and interpret it for me. And they couldn't even figure it out. Not a word, not a syllable. But I've heard that you interpret dreams and solve mysteries. So if you can read the writing and interpret it for me, you will be rich and famous, a purple robe, the great gold chain around your neck, and third in command in the kingdom. Daniel answered the king, you can keep your gifts or give them to somebody else, but I will read the writing for the king and tell him what it means. And this is where Daniel begins to translate what this was. And he said, listen, O king, the high God gave your father Nebuchadnezzar a great kingdom and a glorious reputation. Because God made him so famous, people from everywhere, whatever their race, color, and creed were totally intimidated by him. He killed or spared people or on whim. He promoted or humiliated people capriciously. Well, I like that word. <laughs> he developed a big head and a hard spirit. Then God knocked him off his high horse, stripped him from his fame. He was thrown out of human company, lost his mind, and lived like a wild animal. He ate grass like an ox and was soaked by heaven's dew until he learned his lesson that the high God rules human kingdoms and put anyone he wants in charge. You are his son and you've known all of this, yet you're, at, you're as arrogant as he ever was. Look at you, setting yourself up in competition against the master of heaven. You had the sacred chalices from his temple brought into your drunken party so that you and your nobles, your wives, and your concubines could drink from them. You used the sacred chalices to toast your gods of silver and gold, bronze and iron, wood and stone, blind, deaf, and imbecile gods. But you treat with contempt the living God who holds your entire life from birth to death in his hand. Let me tell you how he handled he handed himself. <laughs> he handed himself. He 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 checked him before he told him what the writing on the wall is, right? So then he says in verse 24, God sent the hand that wrote on the wall, and this is what was written. Mene, Tekel, and Paris. This is what the words meant. Mene, God has numbered the days of your rule, and they don't add up. Tekel, you have been weighed on the scales, and you don't weigh much. Paris, the kingdom has been divided up, and... He, excuse me, handed over to Medes and Persians. First of all, I feel like the message translation just made it seem like he went in, right, Sharita? Like, you've been weighed on the scales and you don't weigh much. Like, he went in on him. <laughs> he went in on him. God has numbered the days of your rule and they don't add up. He said the math ain't math in. Like, Jesus said the math, the math ain't math in, right? They, he, he played him, right? So, here it is that we see Daniel has the ability now to interpret what was on the wall, right? Right, Chrissy? Very gangster. I'm reading it. I'm like, oh, it makes me feel like somebody would do like, oh, oh. <laughs> so let's break this down a little bit, right? Because we're talking about the world is looking for us. The world is looking for us. And so we see here that the king encountered an issue and requested a problem solver. Like we spoke about yesterday, um, who are the problems going to go to? Uh, why not the problem solver? Why not the one that has the ability to actually navigate what is going to take place? And so the king encountered an issue. And so he requested a problem solver. I have a problem, so I need a problem solver. And this is what's happening in the world right now, that there are so many problems that have uh, risen up because people are in a state 
right? Whether it's a state of despair, a state of discouragement, a state of depression, people are in a state and they are, are, are indirectly and directly looking for problem solvers. The Bible says that the world is moaning and groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. And so uh, from what I know of, let's say you picture someone in the hospital uh, who is in great pain and you're hearing uh, a, a height of moans and groans, this is a indication that this person needs assistance. And so if the earth is moaning and groaning uh, for the manifestation of the sons of God, it the, it's saying to me that because of the problems, because of the circumstances, because of the pains of the earth, that they need assistance. And so uh, the moaning and groaning is an indicator and a signal that I need to stand in my place and rise up so that I can meet the need and answer the groan. Come on, your business, your brand, what God has called you to, the ministry that he's called you to, the calling that is on your life is literally the answer to the groan. The answer to the groan. Somebody type in the chat, I'm answering a groan. I'm answering a groan. There's somebody who's calling out your name through a groan. There's somebody who is uh, speaking uh, uh, some uh, a request for you through a groan. There's somebody who is having an uh, issue and a challenge that only you can answer through a groan. And so when the Bible tells us that uh, there is a groan that literally beckons us to come, beckons us to be manifested, beckons us to stand up, I am answering a groan. I'm answering a groan. I'm answering a groan. Come on. I see y'all. I'm answering a groan. So as challenges arise, problem solvers are sought for. As challenges arise, problem solvers are sought for. And so what he did was he called for the enchanters, the fortune tellers, and the diviners. And I, I want to believe that the king... Uh, didn't know of anyone else that had the ability to answer this problem. And there are so many people who are looking for answers and they're so used to going to who they know. They're so used to going to the familiar. They're so used to going to who they think has the answer in their hands. But somebody say, they ain't meet me yet. <laughs> They ain't meet me yet. They ain't meet me yet, right? He, he was so used to going to a specific type of people that he felt had the ability to find the answer that he needed. And so he requested for the fortune tellers, the enchanters, the diviners, and they couldn't figure it out. Come on, Jazz. Come on, Shan. They, they, they couldn't figure it out, right? The people that could have or was thought to be the ones that had the answer could not figure it out. And the Bible says the people went into a panic. The people went into a panic. That's it, Danina. The people went into a panic because it is, a, a, and I want, I want to paint a picture for you guys this morning, that the world is in a state of panic because they cannot find the answers. I want y'all to get the picture of this. Come on. The world is in a state of panic because they can't find the answers. And so if the world is in a state of disarray and they look to other things to find results outside of the, the kingdom of heaven, it automatically equals a state of panic. So this is why you see so many groans and moans being met with alternate devices because they are looking for results and looking for answers and they can't find it through the means that they're looking. And so they, they are now in a state of panic. They are now in a state of panic. When I saw the world shifting uh, with this whole movement of marijuana, I like to call it, I said, oh, they are just looking for a high. And what marijuana uh, uh, actually caused for them was it met them with a result that they felt like could answer their problems. 
And now you see a whole host of people leaning on this drug to get something that they can get through the kingdom of God. But I truly believe that there were some places that the church fell asleep in concerning encounters and experiences for people. That the high in our encounters and our experiences did not take people to the places they desire to be taken to. And so now there is an alternate. But I want to remind you that in the midst of alternates, the world is looking for you. And so he 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 asked for the enchanters, the fortune tellers, the diviners. And they couldn't figure it out. And so the people went into panic. They were missing something. There was an ingredient missing from the mix. So the queen overhears uh, what's happening and she sees the people in panic and she's like, wait a second, let's stop, right? Let's stop. The queen, the queen had a solution. She says, I know somebody. I heard of somebody. She starts to speak highly of Daniel. She had full knowledge of Daniel um, and his capabilities that she explained all he can do, right? She started talking about the fact that this is the man that this is, you know, this back in your dad's days, this is what happened. And so this king sought out titles, but the queen explained a man in your kingdom full of the Holy Spirit. Let me explain something to y'all. Many of us have become intimidated by the fact that there are people looking for people with titles, but there's coming a time where the world is seeking out those that are filled with the Holy Spirit. That we've been a part of a system where people are looking for titles, bring in, bring, bring in the, the, the uh, enchanters, right? Because the title is so, is so sexy that it speaks to what they could do. Bring in the diviners, bring, bring in those who, who can fortune tell. But the queen just said, a man in your kingdom full of the Holy Spirit. There was no title. There was no grand introduction. She said, a man in your kingdom full of the Holy Spirit. And so here we are where there's no title or big name that can trump the Holy Spirit. Come on. There is no title or no big name that can trump the Holy Spirit. And so here you are comparing yourself to a big name, to somebody who has 56.4K followers and, and you're in a state of comparison because you're wondering why I don't have the same traction as that person. And I hear the Lord saying there is no title, no big name, no amount of followers that can trump the Holy Spirit. The king had all of these titles that he was looking for. And the queen says, a man in your kingdom full of the divine Holy Spirit. Come on, I'm, I'm a woman in the kingdom filled with the divine Holy Spirit. But one of the things about Daniel that made him who he was, was that he leaned in to who he was as a problem solver. And I want us to really identify the three things that she named when she spoke about him being a problem solver. One, full of the Holy Spirit. Two, a brilliant mind. And three, incredibly wise. Full of the Holy Spirit, a brilliant mind, incredibly wise. And I want to let you know today that as you are identifying yourself as a problem solver. You are full of the Holy Spirit. You have a brilliant mind and you are incredibly wise. These are amazing declarations to speak over yourself when you are releasing yourself right into the problem solving anointed that I am full of the Holy Spirit. Come on, Shan. I have a brilliant mind and I am incredibly wise. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. And so we see that the king wanted to reward Daniel and Daniel said, keep your gifts. I will read the writing and interpret. Why was he so sure to continue 
and reject what he was about to get. Because when you know that you're sent, and I'm talking about as a lifestyle and not a verb in the moment, because some people are sent just for the moment. And some people know they wake up and they understand that I am sent by God. When you know that you are sent, you respond in obedience and expectation to your disposition. And that's at all times, right? We we do have our moments. We do have times where we feel, you know, shaky and unsure about what we need to do. But when you know that you are sent, you respond in obedience and expectation to your disposition because this is what you do. This is what you do. This is what you do. And so I want to remind us this morning, I want to remind us this morning that the world is looking for you above the other options, not because you are uh, uh, the most resourceful, you are the mo- the biggest one, you are the one who has the most traction, the most money, the most uh, uh, resources and people, but because you are full of the Holy Spirit. You possess a brilliant mind and you are wise. You are wise. Thank you, Lord. There's a difference on you. There's a difference on you. And there's something that we have to take up in the midst of everything that we are experiencing and understand that it just hits different for us. That the way that we do things because of the Holy Ghost, the thing that the enchanters, the fortune tellers and the diviners were missing rests on my life, that I am full of the Holy Spirit. I am full. I am full of the Holy Spirit. You know why we can walk into rooms and figure things out is because we're full of the Holy Spirit. You know why we are taking the world by storm. And as we build, we're allowing the, 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 the release from our hands and feet to transform the land is because we are full of the Holy Spirit. You know why God is calling us to come and clean up house so that he can establish something great in our lives and see heaven on earth because we are full of the Holy Spirit and something was missing on the other's lives. But Daniel possessed the thing that made him different than everybody else, that made him different than everybody else. Come on, Naisha, that's it. That made him different than everybody else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God this morning. We thank God this morning. Come on, this is our day three of our problem solving series. And I I feel a difference even in myself where there's another injection of confidence on me that I understand who I am as a problem solver. That when I walk into a room, demons flee and problems they begin to get prepared to be changed and so I, I I'm walking with a different confidence I'm walking with a different reality hallelujah hallelujah father make us like Daniel that we are called into rooms where where the answers couldn't be found my God hallelujah father call us into rooms oh god where people were perplexed and now we are here to bring clarity hallelujah father call us into rooms before great men so that when they need the assistance they want somebody who's filled with the holy ghost i don't i don't want a regular doctor i want a doctor that has been uh filled with the holy spirit who has a brilliant mind and who is wise beyond his age i i want a doctor who has the holy ghost that when he picks up his tools some uh, he he doesn't even have to go further with the treatment because all he has to do is rest his hands on me and I'm going to recover. I need somebody with the Holy Ghost. I I, I desire, I was telling Nadia on um uh, Monday that uh, I had a choice to go back to my old hairdresser or go to her and Holy Spirit immediately told me that he wanted me to place my money into her business because she's filled with the Holy Ghost. And I said, I need somebody to put their hands in my hair that's filled with the Holy Spirit because every time they touch my skin, I don't know whatever is going on. Something has to shift in the nature of my hair because she got the Holy Ghost. I need a dietitian like Sharita who's filled with the Holy Spirit, who gives me the information that I need to completely alter the where I am in life concerning my health and wellness because she got the Holy Ghost. I need somebody filled. I need somebody filled. I need somebody who's going to understand who God is and who 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 the Holy Spirit is, and so they are being led. Hallelujah! I need somebody filled with the Holy Ghost. 
with the Holy Ghost. I'm getting tired of doing my nails at the Chinese people. They are skilled, but I need somebody filled with the Holy Ghost. I need somebody filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And not that the Chinese people ain't filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't know, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I need somebody filled with the Holy Ghost. Right? I need I need a, a esthetician like Hadassah who is filled with the Holy Ghost that every time she touched my face to do a facial that I'm feeling the power of God through her fingers. I need the Holy Ghost. I need somebody filled with the Holy Ghost to do my massages because every time they press into my body, I need to feel that the oil of the Lord is being pressed into my pores. I need somebody with the Holy Ghost. And so the world is looking for you looking for you there is such a shift that's about to take place in the earth realm where the world is turning their heads you guys hear me talk about this vision that i had so many times the world is literally turning its head and looking for a place for them to lay their heads the exiles are coming home you see at the groves you're seeing people uh at the droves you're seeing people who have once been in a place of despair saying i'm turning my head to the holy ghost and they are looking for people who have the Holy Spirit, who can usher in what they need the right way. They're looking for you. They're looking for you. They're looking for you. But if you don't stand up as a problem solver, how can you be found? Y'all hear me talk about the analogy of, of a doctor being on a plane and somebody being in distress. The first thing that the crew will say is, is there a doctor in here? Is there a doctor on board? And let's say the doctor in so much fear and anxiety decides to sit down and not make himself known. And all of a sudden the person goes into cardiac arrest because the doctor did not stand up. I want to remind you the implications of us not standing up, the implications of us sitting back when somebody calls us forth, the implications of us seeing the problems that we are called to and not running to its rescue, the implications of us sitting in the background where we know we need to be in the forefront because God is calling us to greater things. The implications of us not making ourselves known in situations that they're looking for answers. I'm the answer. I'm the answer. And so because I have the, the answer laying up on the inside of me, I bring solutions to a place where there's chaos. I bring solutions to a place where there's no order because God has raised me up as a strategist, but not just a strategist, but a strategist filled with his divine Holy Spirit. The strategist filled with a brilliant mind and, and, and wisdom. And I, I'm the answer. I'm the one that you call when you need assistance to figure out what your business looks like. But if I'm insecure about what God has called me to, if there's insecurities that's taken over above what my identity is, then I won't answer when you call. I won't answer when you call. Is there a doctor in here? Is there a doctor on board? And I visibly see the person going into cardiac arrest, but because of my insecurity and my fear, God, I don't think that I could do this. I don't think that I'm called to this. I don't think that I'm the one that you should be calling. I don't think that I'm the one that should be on stages. I don't think that I'm the one that 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 should be in front of videos. I don't think I'm the one that should be doing lives. I don't think I don't think I'm the one. You should call somebody else. I don't think I'm the one that should be doing these events. I I really don't think that I'm the one. But yet I see people around me suffering in the very thing that I'm called to answer. My God, I see people around me suffering. Come on, Nurse Arya. Come on, come on. Put some respect on your name. That's my little sister, y'all, and she's a nurse. Hi, boo. <laughs> I, need, I need someone filled with the Holy Ghost. I need someone filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on. And the world is looking for you. The world is looking for you. But we got to stand up and make ourselves known. We got to stand up. The Lord is blowing our names into the wind. But there's something that he's looking for. It's the yes. It's the agreement. It's the, it's the I'm standing in alignment with what you're asking of me. It's the activity that aligned with you coming out of the bushel and being placed on the hill. We understand that promotion comes from the father, but it's, it's, a, it's an exposure that he's requiring from us through our activity. That Lord, it's me, send me, I'm here. In the midst of a crowd, David walks out and says, send me, 
I'll go. I'll go. Send me to fight Goliath. I'll go. The boldness in understanding who he was in the midst of something that has been tormenting his community for decades. Do you know that the very thing that you've called to has been tormenting people for ages, for ages. And now here you are, you show up on the scene and God is requiring you to now stand up and say, hey, I'm here, I'm the answer. I'm the answer. I'm the answer. Or you just operating at a high level of excellence that you don't even have to do it yourself. That just like the queen came into the situation and said, hey, I know somebody. Because why? Before that, Daniel was moving and shaking. There was activity that represented that he knew what he was doing. And so it was undeniable. People saw how he moved and they said, oh, this is the one that you call. This is the one that we need to get into the room. Because every time there was a call and a problem, if you read the chapters before this, you will see that anytime the king had a dream or the king was confused about something, he called on Daniel and Daniel came and he made sure that he became the solution. And so your activity is about to make you known. Every time we talk about moving forward in what God is calling you to do, the people need to see who they need to call. How would they know if you are afraid of putting yourself out there? The queen knew because every time there was a call, Daniel answered and he performed at such a high level that he was now the standard. Come on. We can't stand in the background concerning this thing. We cannot stand in the background and be a kingdom CEO. Whatever God has called you to, he said, I, I can't hide you as a light under a bushel. I got to put you on the type of the hill. Because when people see you and your good works, they glorify me in heaven. They glorify me in heaven. Hallelujah. Come on, Naisha. That's it. We merely rock on any block. It don't matter where we are. It doesn't matter where we are, right? It doesn't matter what type of situation, what type of problem. Because I got the Holy Ghost, there is no restriction to the answers that flow out of me. I'm a well. I'm a well. I'm a well. Come on. I'm a well. So we're going to pray. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We lay ourselves on the altar this morning, oh God that you will remove anything in us, oh God, that serves as a hindrance to us propelling forward, to us understanding who we are in you, oh God, to us understanding our identity. Remove it out of the way, Father, so that there are no restrictions. There are no restrictions. My, my God, my God, there are no restrictions. Come on, come on, that's it, Danny, no limitations. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And we ask you for wisdom even now, oh God. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Ha robo ko se de behe kusaya. Wisdom. Aman su yele behe kusata. Sheke te bendo koloman de kiela bahan su kushi. Wisdom. Aman su yele behe kotaba maman siyahe. Libra kanda man kuri robo kusata bahan de kiaha. Deuteronomy 28 13 says that the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou shalt hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. And so there are prerequisites, right? Uh, yes, the Bible tells us that we are the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath, right? We're lenders, not borrowers, right? Uh, but there are prerequisites that the Lord said that you got to hearken unto my voice, hearken unto my word, hearken unto my commandments. Because if you observe them and do them, it puts you at an advantage. Daniel was one who observed and did, right? He observed and he accomplished. He observed and there was activity. He observed the word of God and then there was movement. I declare that you will no longer observe and stand still. I declare that this is a day that as we step into our last day of our fast, that you will become an observer and you will become a doer. That the same uh, uh, same fervence that you put into observing, the same fervence that you put into hearing, the same fervence that you put into coming 
coming on push talks, coming on to the, the, the fast, hearing the word of God is the same fervence or even more that you'll put towards activity. The Bible says that if you observe and you do them, if you observe and you step into movement and momentum, if you observe and you are moving on what I told you, you will be the head and not the tail. You will be above and not beneath. So you could pray this all day. You can declare this thing all day, but until you align yourself with the movement that is required to be noticed above those in the land, you'll stand still. You'll stand still. Yes, I'm the head and not the tail. That's a promise, but that's a promise that I got to come into alignment with. There are so many promises that the Lord has given to us. And sometimes we go before God and we say, you said, you said this, you said that, but yet we are not in a position to be aligned that if he deposits it into our lives, that we are ready to receive. It's like somebody asking the Lord to bless them with a car and they never did the work to go get their license. You're not aligned. You say that you want to receive, but you're not aligned. There's an alignment that takes place when you are in a space of preparation. You got to get aligned. You got to get aligned. Hallelujah. And so we ask the Lord this morning to give us what we need. Give us what we need, oh God. Give us what we need. Give us what we need. Come on, we're going to pray. I want you to begin to speak over yourselves even now. I want you to begin to speak over yourselves even now. Ha, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. The world is looking for you. 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 The world is looking for me. Come on. Speak over your lives. The world is looking for me. I'm the one that they're looking for. To be a problem solver, to be a solutionist. Come on, the world is looking for me. Ando I will stand in alignment through activity. Through activity. So when the Lord is looking to release, that I'm in the place to receive. Come on, the world is looking for me. Begin to declare that over your life. I am the solutionist that the world is looking for. I'm the one that stands up in my industry and brings solutions to every problem. I am the answer. So there's not a problem that I'm intimidated by. I have, I am full of the Holy Spirit. I have a brilliant mind. I am filled with wisdom. Come on and declare it over yourself. I stand in the midst of chaos and I already understand the order that is required. I have the answers to the problems in my industry. I am the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I will remove myself from the bushel and allow the Lord to place me on the hill like a light post. Because I know that the world is looking for me. I will not hide in, oh God, fear. I will not hide in anxiety. I will not hide because I don't feel like I'm good enough for the call. I put that aside and I actually destroy that way of thinking. I destroy that paradigm even now so that I can step in fully and stand up when I am called. I am called above the enchanters, above the fortune tellers, above all oh, the diviners. I am called above those in my industry who dabble in new age. I am called above. I'm called above. There is something on my life that they don't have, that I have the ability to tap into the Holy Spirit and receive the answers that the world is looking for. The world is looking for me, the one who is filled with the Holy Ghost, the one who is filled with all that I need, the one who is filled with the things that the world is asking for, that the world is groaning and moaning for our manifestations. Lord, do it. Lord, do it. 
Lord, do it. Ha la ban su yere behe kusa ha. Come on. There are angel of blessings around us. And we refuse to allow our angels of blessings to depart in Jesus' name. Come on and give your angels work to do. They are they are standing around waiting for you to give them assignment because their job is to dispatch what you need ha la ban su ye libra kataman sho ye rebe he kosata but in a place of alignment and activity i have the ability to become attractive to my angels they say i'm here to do the work i'm here to dispatch what you need i'm here to to release the things that you need ha bra kosia hata and i refuse to allow my angel of the uh, of of blessings to depart come on we paralyze all aggression addressed to our star in jesus name Lord God, arise in your anger and fight my war for me. Fight the war, oh God, for us. Fight the war, oh God, of confusion concerning what we're called to. Fight the war, oh God, concerning us being in places of paralysis. Fight the war for us, Father. We neutralize all problems originating from the mistakes of our parents. My God, anything that has been passed down generationally or in our bloodline that has been served as a place of insecurity or lack of courage, a lack of confidence, Father, we break that thing's head now in the mighty name of Jesus and we neutralize it in Jesus name. We command, oh God, that anything, oh God, in our bloodline, it will be cleansed in the mighty name of Jesus, that anything that held us back, anything, oh God, that stems from poverty and laziness, oh God, anything that stems from giving up easily, oh God, and not having the finisher's anointing that rests in our bloodline. My God, we neutralize that out in Jesus' name. Lord, bring the honey out of the rock for us this month, oh God. Father, your goodness, we want to experience it at high levels. We want to experience your goodness, oh God, that brings us into rooms with people that need our help. Father, blow our names into the wind, oh God, so that when people are looking for answers, they look, oh God, for us, those that you have called, Father. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that all open doors, all good open doors, oh God, in our lives that have been shut, Father, we declare that they are being made open even now. Allow them to fly open, oh God. Allow them to fly open in Jesus' name. Let all anti-breakthrough demons against our lives be shattered to irreplaceable. Uh, 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 um, into irreparable pieces in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare, oh God, that you will paralyze all satanic antagonism against our destiny right from the womb. I declare, Lord God, that we will no longer suffer things that we experience from the womb. We will no longer suffer things that we experience in our bloodline. I pray, Lord God, that we will paralyze all satanic antagonism against our destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. We trample upon every enemy of our our advancement. We unseat all the power sitting on our promotions in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare in Jesus' name that you will enlarge our coast beyond our wildest dreams. We claim back all the goods presently residing in the wrong hands. Father, if our goods are in somebody else's hands, we retrieve them in the spirit and cause them to be manifested in the earth realm. Lord God, uproot all of the evil things that are against our advancement now in Jesus' name. Lord, plant into our lives good things that will advance our cause in Jesus name. Let every spiritual weakness in our lives receive permanent termination in Jesus name. Let every financial failure in our life receive permanent termination in Jesus name. Let every sickness fashion to pull us from our advancement or pull our advancement down receive permanent termination in Jesus name. We refuse to reap any satanic harvest in any area of our lives in Jesus name. We paralyze all spiritual wolves working against our lives in Jesus name. Whatever hinders us from greatness begin to give way now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every imprisoned and buried potentials come forth now in the name of Jesus. I command all unfriendly helpers in every area of our lives to depart now in Jesus name. We render null and void the effect of any interactions with satanic agents moving around as men and women in Jesus name. We bind every strong man having our goods in his possession in Jesus name. We break the curse of automatic failure working in any department of our lives in Jesus name. Let the anointing to excel and prosper fall mightily upon every department of our lives in Jesus name. Let every anti-progressive 
altar fashioned against us be destroyed with the fire of God in Jesus' name. We withdraw our benefits from the hands of the oppressors now in Jesus' name. Let every power chasing blessings away from us be paralyzed in the name of Jesus. Let the enemy begin to vomit every good thing he has eaten up in our lives in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, give us the power to overcome every obstacle to breakthrough. Give us the power to overcome every single obstacle to our breakthrough. We break all curses of leaking blessings in Jesus name. We clear our goods from the warehouse of the strong man in the name of Jesus. We frustrate and disappoint every instrument of the enemy fashioned against our advancement in Jesus name. We take authority over every satanic attack on our advancement in Jesus name. Let every opposition to our breakthrough crash into pieces in Jesus name. We render all evil attacks against our advancement impotent now in Jesus name. I stand against every faith destroyer in our lives. Every th single thing that has come to destroy our faith, we stand against it now in Jesus' name and we bulldoze our way into breakthroughs this month. We bulldoze our way into breakthroughs this August. We bulldoze our way into breakthroughs, oh God, in this season. And we thank you for answering our prayers in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, amen, amen. Come on, you are the head and not the tail. You are the head and not the tail and you activate that through activity. You activate that through activity. You activate that through observing and through doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. That's it. We bulldoze our way into breakthroughs this month. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. And his promises are yea and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, the problem solving anointing is resting on our lives. And we thank God that, that there is a, a, a call that we cannot ignore. That there is a call that we cannot ignore because the world is looking for Holy Ghost filled individuals that will go before the Lord, go before the world and say, here I am, I'm the answer. Here I am, I'm the answer. And that type of energy and confidence, right? When you come with that energy into a room, that I'm the answer. Not only do problems attract themselves to you, but immediately you release yourself into a place where you are now releasing solutions. You are releasing solutions that other people didn't have the ability to release because you are an answer. You embody, because you have the answer of all answers laying up on the inside of you. You embody that thing. There's not a situation that can come up against you that you don't have the answer for. It might take a little time. It might, it might take us really sitting before the Lord and seeking his face, but you have the answer. I'll leave us with this. Whenever something in my mind, I, I have a hard time remembering it. And it could be something small. Uh, I believe um, me and Danny were talking about one of those old toys from back in the days. And we couldn't figure out the name. She was like, remember the little things we used to play with? And you had to like feed it and you had to uh, pick up the poop. And and I, I saw it in my head because I know all of us or some, most of us probably had one, but I couldn't figure out the name. And I said, uh, I said, Holy Spirit, help me with this. But I was still thinking about it when I asked him that. And I still was finding myself with a wall. And I said to Danny, this has been happening to me lately where I would ask the Holy Spirit to help me find something or help me locate something in my mind. And then I would still assist the process by thinking still, and I'm hitting a wall. And what Holy Spirit said to me was, if you're going to ask me, then let go of the control. And I'm like, oh, shoot, I didn't even realize I was doing that. So th when I let go, that's when the answer came to me. I said, Danny, gigapets. She's like, yes, come on. Holy Spirit knows everything. And I didn't realize that while I was still trying to be uh, or still trying the way that I wanted to try while I was asking him to do it, that it was bumping heads. It was literally like there's two chiefs in the room. Are you going to fall back and allow me to do what you just asked? And I said, oh, I didn't even realize that because I always used to, it, it used to perplex me that, that 
um, I would still think about it and I would cause myself to, to really get into a place of a, a dead end. Like, I can't think about what this thing is. Come on. I said, oh yeah, that's, the, I got to let go. And that answer came straight to me immediately. It was like clockwork immediately, seconds later. So let us fall back as the Lord is ushering us into this place of being problem solvers. We don't have to help him with what he's doing. We just have to do our part and get into alignment and watch how the Lord is going to blow our names into the wind. I literally hear that promise over us today that the Lord is going to blow our names into the wind, but there comes a time where you now have to be in a place of alignment to receive what he's about to do. And nobody in here after this fast should feel like something did not break on the inside of you concerning you understanding that you are a problem solver. You understanding that you are called for such a time as this. The Bible said the nobles were in a panic I heard the Lord say, look around, guys. The world is in a panic. How do you respond to the panic? How are you now going to respond to the panic? In your lane, in your place of influence, you operating as the part of the body, doing your part, doing what God has called you to do. How do we respond? to the panic my god how do you respond to the panic do you close your eyes and put your hands on your ears and act like you don't see or hear anything and sit back because you are too tired you are too uh insecure you are too fearful so you decide on your own that you are going to sit back and watch the panic happen how are we responding to the panic that I don't have the right to rob God of his investment my God my God I don't have the right to rob God of his investment because with every investment there must be a return the Lord said I put breath in your lungs to be an agent of change on this land how dare you rob me of my investment by deciding on your own that you're going to sit back because you're in fear how dare you? How dare you? That's my investment. You are a thief. That's my investment. I place something on the inside of you and you decide that you are not going to move on it. How dare you rob me? That's my investment. I place something on the inside of you for you to be a part of the mission. And you chose to sit down, cover your ears, cover your eyes and ignore the panic that the world is in. Ignore the panic that the world is experiencing. And until we step forward as a body, the panic will continue. But I declare that Suda Circle will not rob the Lord from his investment. I declare that we will be a sister circle that causes people to run towards us because they know that we are moving in a state of activity and momentum and that we are who they need, that we are answers and we know it. We are solutions and we know it. We are, we are the ones that they're looking for and we know it. There's not an ounce of false humility that lies up on the inside of us where everything that, 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 that we think that we can do, we step back and we tiptoe and we make ourselves small because of other people, because of how big this thing is. No, we know it. There's something about knowing that God called you. There's something about unknowing. There's something about unknowing. And I declare that there we will begin to walk in the knowing. Walk in the knowing. You ain't cocky if you say, I know that I'm the answer. That's you bragging on the fact that you got the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. I'm an answer. I'm an answer. We always talk about Jesus going to the wedding as a wedding guest and being called to do the first miracle that we see in the Bible where he's at the wedding and turns the water into wine. 
he had no choice but to be the solution because he is an answer. He had no choice to release the solution because he himself was the answer to the point where his mother was so confident in him and said, whatever he tell y'all to do, do it. And I know Jesus probably looked over at his mother like, ma, it's not the time for that. I just came to enjoy the wedding. And she looked at him with the eyes of, but baby, you're an answer. I don't think you get to choose whether or not you release the solution. There is panic here. The people are in disarray because they run out of wine. And guess what? You are an answer. You don't have a choice. When you are in a space and there is a problem, you don't have a choice. You're an answer. So she gave him the mother look and he had to move because he's an answer. I have a job description. I'm an answer. And what do answers do? They release solutions. And so I declare over us today that we will walk in this authority Walk in this dominion. Come on. That's it. You don't have a choice. Walk in this thing. Walk in this thing. Walk in this thing. I remember hearing my pastor talk this series. Uh, he It was called Marked. It was a series called Marked. And he was talking about what we are marked for. And he said something that made me so mad. And I went home that day and I had to sit with it. He said, you can't even run if you walk, want to. You're marked. That thing made me so mad. That thing made me so mad. He said, as soon as you said, yes, you've been marked. That God can literally locate you wherever you are because you've been marked. That there's something on you that is undeniable because you've been marked. And I said, oh, so I can't, I can't drop this. <laughs> I can't let this go. You trying to tell me it, 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 and thank you, Holy Spirit, for the visual. Um, how many of you know that when certain banks they go and rob the bank, and there's an ink that flows from the bag because they want to mark the robber so that everywhere they go, that they are noticed and they can be caught. The Lord just showed me that visual. We're marked. There's something on us that cannot be denied there's something on us that's irrevocable we are marked we say yes already there's no going back there's no going back come on that's it Danny it wouldn't have mattered what the problem was it still would have been Jesus because he come come on he was the answer it don't matter what it is we are marked we are marked this is why when the disciples uh when Jesus was about to go get crucified the people say, aren't you the one who walked with Jesus? My God, Peter and them couldn't even run if they wanted to. Peter started to hide. He like, no, I'm, I'm not him. I'm not him. You crazy. You are marked. You are marked. There is something on you that people see. You are marked. You can't even run if you wanted to. He started to deny. Uh-uh, that's not me. You talking about somebody else? Uh-uh. Guilty by association. I am, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I am guilty by association. As soon as I said yes, I'm marked. I'm marked. I'm marked. Hallelujah. 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 I'm gonna stop here because I feel I feel another wind on me, and we're gonna stop here. It's 7:09. We're gonna stop here. Go ahead, Danny. I had to laugh because I'm like, yo, God, this you're funny. The mark, right? This is not a mark that when you say yes he's drawing a bullseye on you it's literally a mark that exposes itself you guys remember those um those coloring papers that used to have the paint line on it and the paint line was always there but until we put it in the water it literally was now exposed to everyone for it to see the mark does not it doesn't mean you were already chosen because God is the author and the finisher. You were already chosen. He already knew you beforehand. But your yes made that mark visible to everybody else and to him. It, the mark, is it's already there. You're already chosen. But your yes exposes it. Your yes puts you in activation. Yeah, it's it's not even something that's, that's drawn on once we say yes. Our yes, because it's already in us. It's already there. And literally... When we say yes, I feel like we find our flow because it's like fighting against the grain. Because so like what you said, B, even if even if you try to, you can't you can't run from it. 
You can't run from it. Honestly, I know that God told me, like, there's no way I can get away. There's no way I can run from the calling on my life. There is no way. Life gets harder for me. I feel like I'm drowning when I'm not in position. So it's already there. So your surrender will allow you to find your flow. When you fight against it, you feel like you're hitting against rocks. But your flow is there when you surrender to the yes. Because the mark is in you. It's in you. Your yes says, now I'm partnering with you, God. Yes, now, God, I'm letting you get take the wheel so you can drive and not me. So, yeah, it's already there. <laughs> it's already there. You can't say no. All right, that's it. I love that. I love that. I love that because it gives us perspective that when the Bible talks about the Lord knowing us, knowing our calling, knowing who we were before we were even in our mother's womb, like he, he already summoned us. Like it, 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 it was already a summoning that took place. And like you said, our yes just came into agreement with what he already established. My God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We are done for the morning unless uh somebody has a word that they desire to release thank you father go ahead shan sorry good morning everyone so as danny was speaking um what uh, about being marked i know i was reading in revelation i know and it talks about the rapture and the ending times and all that other stuff but the part that was sticking out to me right now is that how god sends out his angel to mark those so that death don't take them right so the angel of death doesn't um touch them and being marked also me when, when i was like sitting here i'm like okay god and it's like, God is saying that even though we are marked and we're going to go through circumstances, we're going to go through attacks, we're going to go through hard situations because being marked also means that the enemy is going to come up against us because we're actually saying, yes, we're flowing in that. Yes. But that doesn't mean that death is going to take us. It doesn't mean that it's going to take us down. It doesn't mean that we're not going to overcome. It doesn't mean that we're not more than conquerors. It doesn't mean that we're not going to get through the wilderness seasons. It doesn't mean that being marked, like Danny said, doesn't mean that it's a bullseye. But it means that we are successful in all that we do, that we are equipped to live a life that God has set before us, that we are graced for whatever the answer that we are called to. So being marked also means that it, we're going to surpass, right? It's going to be a peace that surpasses all understanding because we said yes, because we are willing to do what God has called us to do, right? That we can be the head, that it, we're not going to drown, right? Even when Bianca was saying that, that we are the head and not the tail, that means that we're going to be able to live above water. We're going to be able to stand over those things and over those circumstances. So that encouraged me and I wanted to share that. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing that, Shan. I love that. Come on. Come on. <laughs> yes, Danny, her voice is back. That's it. Go ahead, Rita. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> um, and yes, Chantel's voice is back while you were speaking. I'm like, yeah, she's she's here. She's here. She's back. So I thank God for what he has done in such a short time and what he's going to continue to do. Um, but what Danny said, I just want to piggyback off of that because it was just so profound about, you know, um, surrender helps you to find your flow. And, um, you know, things get easier when you say yes. And of course, like Chantel mentioned, you're still going to go through um, adversity. The enemy is going to come, come against you. But when you're in partnership with the Holy Spirit, he gives you the grace. He gives you the wisdom, the strategy to fight against the attacks of the enemy. So when you are in a, a, in a posture of no, you don't have that grace. You don't have that wisdom. So things are, in fact, harder for you. But um, while... Danny was speaking it what, what came to mind was the story of the prophet Jonah and for those of you who don't know um, about the story God had given him a word to say to certain people to say to a, um, a certain group of people to go and repent and turn away from their wicked ways and instead of going to the town where he was supposed to go he went in the opposite direction and while he was on the boat a storm uh, uh, a storm blew out 
And um, the people on the boat was like, this storm is because of you. And so they ended up throwing him over the boat and he got consumed by a big fish or a big whale. And because he did, while, while Danny was speaking, I was like, because he didn't surrender, he got into this, this devastation. Seriously, he got into this devastation. So he was in the belly of the whale for about three days. And when he finally uh, surrendered, the whale sw uh, th swallowed him out or he threw him up or whatever. And then he went and did what he was supposed to do, what God originally told him to do. And so some of us, we have to get to a point where we actually self-reflect and ask the Lord, is there an area in my life that I'm not surrendering and why I'm experiencing what I'm experiencing right now because of the lack of my yes? Some of us may need to ask the Father, what am I doing? You know, um, we, we put ourselves in harder situations because we don't surrender. And so I just want to encourage you all today to ask the Father, am I putting myself in a situation that I don't need to be because I'm not saying yes? So that's all I have to say. Come on. Come on. That's it. That's it. What am I putting myself in? What type of will am I putting myself in when I don't say yes? What type of situations am I bringing? There's a lot of self-inflicted situations that we are experiencing right now simply because the Lord keeps beckoning and we keep turning our backs. And so I pray that as we move forward, that there is a confidence and a courage that rests on us to go, to go, to go, to go, to go. There's a green light all over us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on. I feel good this morning. I feel, I feel the, the presence of the Lord very heavily. I need to sit in this thing. God has done it. Uh, this fast has been amazing. This is day three and we're going to make sure we break every single, uh, a tight mold that has been on our lives. That's been holding us back, uh, by the end of, by the time before 3 PM comes, I pray that we will all experience an encounter, a boost of confidence, a boost of courage, to go into the, the places that the Lord is calling us to go into with a, a high level of awareness that we are problem solvers. Thank you, Lord. Um, if you desire to sow into the fast, if you desire to sow in the fast, if you are feeling led to do so, uh, you can do so using our cash app and you can sow into the fast uh, to partner with what is being released. If you feel led to sow into the fast, you can partner with what is being released and uh, we want to make sure that everybody gets an opportunity that wants to. Um, and as we move forward today, remember, we're not dieting. We're not just abstaining from food. We are praying. We are praying. We are praying. I want you to declare those things over your life. For those of you who do not have the book Prayer Rain, um, I encourage you to purchase it on Amazon. Or if um, what I'll probably do is also drop in the um drop in the chat the digital version i'll drop the digital version in the chat also i i wanted to where's somebody on here no i think she left okay um danina um, i'm gonna add you to the chat today and can you just let us know um who you're connected to i know you've been here for some time um but who are you connected to so that I can get connected with you Oh, sure. I'm connected with Roslyn McIntosh. <clears throat> oh, Roslyn. Okay, perfect. <laughs> All right. So um, I'll get your information from Roz and get you connected. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it so much. Appreciate you. Of course. All right. So um, let's go and be great today, y'all. Um, happy day three. Let's go. <laughs> May I be like you, open to the movements of your heart.